Hello, Bronwyn Lund from Bronholm Tours here. I'm on the island of Bronholm and uh, I'm in the town of Hasler, which is just north of the main town of Bona on the east coast of the island. And uh, today we're going to uh, take a walk around the town of Hasler. So I hope you enjoy the tour. This is the leisure harbour of Hasler. And uh, Hasler is a very important uh, holiday resort area um, in the summer. It's very quiet at the moment because uh, we're in the middle of winter um, and it's quite misty. So on a clear day, we can actually see right across the sea to Sweden. But uh, today it's quite hazy, so we can't see Sweden from the harbour today. What we're going to do on this walk is we're going to walk um, along the harbour and out to the smokehouse, which has a very, very important uh, <coughs> part um, in the history of Hasler, and then uh, walk up uh, into uh, the town of Hasler and uh, end the tour there. Now, there were many people who lived in Hasler, um, fishing folk and uh, farmers in the surrounding uh, areas, and uh, it has often been um, an area uh, where people have been very poor and uh, a lot of uh, people emigrated from Hasler to the US. And uh, I wanted to make this film today for a person called Neela who uh, has contacted me on my Facebook page and um, her um, ancestors actually came from Hasler and uh, emigrated to the US. So Neela, I hope you enjoy this tour. This film is for you. So we're leaving the leisure craft area of the harbour, which is the newer end of the harbour, and uh, we're going to enter the more industrial part of the harbour. But uh, before we do that, I just wanted to stop by this sign because I think it has an extremely interesting description of the history of Hasler. Hasler Harbour. Hasler is an old fishing town. The name dates back to 1300. From written sources, we know that the fishing of herring and the trade with the Hanseatic towns was of great importance in the 16th century. In 1555, Hasler got its Monkspool Charter, but during the following years, the fishing stopped and in 1624, the Monkspool Charter was withdrawn by King Christian IV because of its insignificance. In 1745, J.C. Erner, the chief administrator of Bornholm, noted that the harbour of Hasler was the worst one on the island. Even the small fishing villages had better conditions. The small harbour was a problem for the town. A good harbour was the basis for the growth in wealth because of increasing trade and fishing opportunities. And the picture on the left, the large picture, is uh, uh, um, how the town looked in 1754. The first extension of the harbour was made in 1800. On that occasion, stone piers were built. In 1813 to 1814, the division quartermaster, uh, Selchote, wrote that there were 13 boats and two bigger ships in the harbour of Hasler, but it was only two to three feet deep. From 1815 and through the 1820s, extensions were made based on volunteer work. More piers were built and rock was blasted away in the basin. In 1834, the harbour was extended in a strange manner. They had found a stratum of coal stretching under the harbour. They emptied it from the shore and removed a covering layer of sandstone. The water gushed into the empty hole and in that way, the harbour got a lot deeper. In 1874 to 77, the harbour was extended and an outer harbour was built and was deepened to 3.8 metres. Haster um, Coal Works, which is now Haster Klinger and Schmodestings Fabrik, shared the expenses to get a place of disembarkation. The trade of Hasler was never of great importance because Wana, the main town on the island, was so close. But 
still a growing wealth, first of all because of the clinker factory, made new extensions possible. In 1892 to 94, the harbour was extended again, the entrance was deepened to 4.4 metres and a new inner harbour was built with a 19 metre long mole. At the end of the century, the harbour of Hassler was of considerable size. It was number 46 of estimated customs controls in Denmark in 1903. Reiner was number 15. During the 1900s, the harbour of Hassler had an increasing importance. It was quite big after the extension of the 19th century. Still, there were only 16 boats registered in Hassler in 1903, but the harbour was in progress and a lifeboat station and custom house was built in the beginning of the century. In 1906, gas was installed. During World War I, it was very profitable to fish and sell goods to the devastated countries. The coal from the area south of Hassler was a good income when supplies of fuel failed at times of war. But the period of prosperity was short. The stagnation in post-war economy in the 1920s, and especially in the 30s, put a stop to the extensions. After the Second World War, there was a new boon in fishing. In 1962-68, to 68, a new extension was needed. The inner basin was made bigger and had got the nickname Tubor Halm. Gossip said that the work had been very slow because of too much beer drinking. Tubor is a brand of beer here in Denmark. The economy was good. Granite from Bang and clinkers from the clinker works were shipped from here. Vang is a town just north of here um, where there is a major uh, granite works, or there was a major granite works. Hassler became the third biggest harbour after Roma and Nexu. In 1981 to 82, there were 26 fishing boats registered in Hassler. They were great days for fishing until the ships came home empty in the middle of the 1980s. The fish were gone and the bottom had fallen out of the fishing industry. It was believed that it was only a temporary decline and plans for a new extension of the harbour were made. In 1988, the present harbour was complete. It was a big extension with long breakwaters and two outer basins, a large marina and new modern facilities. The situation, however, had changed radically since the start of the building process. Fishing had nearly stopped. Support to break up boats and quotas had made it unprofitable to be a fisherman. Moreover, the cargo boats were cooperating about initiatives in order to attract more yacht sailors, and in that way there were more tourists to the harbours. <coughs> the other side of the, um, of the information here talks about the fishing industry and uh, the trading industry. So the improvements in the harbour of Hassler made it profitable when fishing expanded in the 1880s. Fish is perishable. It was first of all because of better transport possibilities that fishing became profitable. The ships were motorised, a regular service was established between Copenhagen, Germany and Bonholm, and therefore Bonholmers were able to sell fresh and smoked fish instead of salted fish in Copenhagen and in the markets in Germany. So here we can see the fishermen of the harbour in 1923 in the picture in front of us. The growing export of fish from Bornholm at the end of the 19th century was due to smoked herring. In 1876 the first smokehouse was built in Hassler. In 1903 they smoked 19,300 um, uh, shoals of herring or Piece of um, hangers of herring, I'm not sure what it is in English, which is 80 fish per hanger. Because of that, the harbour of Hassler came in second after Reiner when talking about the disembarkation of smoked herring. Herring was caught from April to late summer. The fishing of herring went on like this. In the afternoon, they sailed out to put up the nets before sunset. Then boats and nets went with the current and wind until midnight when the nets were pulled up. The fishermen were not at home until early in the morning, and in the winter they caught cod. The lean codfish was not considered to be suitable for smoking, therefore it wasn't as popular as the fish. And we can see in this picture here in the middle that uh, the fishing boat is being pulled to the harbour by cheering children after a repair in about 1920. After the Second World War, the fish prices went up. It was a profitable business to be a fisherman. 
A contributing factor was technical improvements like radars, trawl and echo sounder, which made it easy and quick for the fishermen to trace and catch the fish. Cold stores were built and the fish could be kept fresh in ice for days. Many of the small smokehouses could not afford to live up to the modern sanitation um, standards and had to close. So the smoking was concentrated in fewer but bigger smokehouses. In the middle of the 1970s, fishing declined in the Baltic. The EEC, which was the old uh, European Union, and the Danish authorities set quotas to prevent overfishing. It was a hope that future fishing would consider the balance in the Baltic so that the fish and the life in the harbour of Hassler could come back. So in Moscow, you could stand on clinkers and eat fish burgers from Hassler. The factory for manufactured fish in Hassler produces fish burgers for McDonald's. Hassler Clinker has delivered the clinkers for the floors in the McDonald's restaurant in, Moxo, in Moscow. So there you go. I think they mean tiles by clinkers. The trading and industry part of uh, Hassler has had the greatest importance and is connected to the resources in the area. Fishing, farming and processing of coal and clay. To the south of Hassler is Steinmagen, which is now a wood. In the soil are valuable, um, valuable uh, sources of coal and clay or deposits of coal and clay. Um, and here is where the former Hassler Coal Works, which is now Hassler Klinker and Shadow Motor Steens Fabric, Tile Fabric, um, located. Years ago, it was the biggest industry on Bornholm with 700 employees. But during the 1970s, the company had to cut back to prevent shutdown. The company was involved in the extension of the harbour in 1874 to 77, paying for a third of the expenses. And the clinkers were brought, or the tiles were brought to the harbour from the factory by train. In 1886, the steamboat company of East Bornholm was established in Nexu. The company had shareholders in all North and East Bornholm, Bornholm towns. The shipping company was a response from East Bornholm to the 1866 company in Brenner. Hassler joined from the start. They saw the possibility to get out of their straitjacket of being so close to, uh, to, um, to Heine. Very soon the company started a regular route with freight and passengers between Bonholm and Copenhagen. Hassler was called out a couple of times a week. Hassler's connection to the East Bornholm route made a practical cooperation between the East and West Coast possible. The harbour of Ellinger was impossible to call in during strong eastern winds and the harbour of Hassler had the same problem in a western storm. You could say that the company got the wind in its sails. Several of their steamboats were wrecked and in 1960 the company closed. So there was a regular passenger steam chip coming, going from here to Copenhagen when there was an easterly wind and uh, from Ellinger which is on the other side of the island on the uh, east side to Copenhagen when there was a westerly wind. We're also going to walk past Kronbeck's grocery on this tour and it has existed in Storgill for 300 years. Storgill means um, large street or main street I guess main street. It is connected to so prominent names as Jens Kuffel and Niels Gomlus who were both very active in the revolt against the Swedes in 1658. The store owner Peter Monk was one of the first men to make Hassler known in the world outside. He was very active in the salmon trade in the 1880s, built a warehouse and had several ships sailing to Germany from where they brought valuable timber back. He contributed a lot to the extension of the harbour and in 1875 the family took over Gronbeck's grocery. In 1950 Gronbeck Limited built the silo in the harbour for the export of seeds. Later the silo was taken over by um, Baff, Bonholm something. Um, Gronbeck's grocery is still there safe and sound. So uh, we will continue along the tour now and uh, walk past the industrial part of the harbour 
um, and we can see the big silo directly in front of us, which um, was the uh, funded by uh, Gonbeck Gore for uh, all their um, all their grocery store needs at the time. And um, it's very interesting, um, the uh, name of the chap with the surname Kuffel, he actually uh, spells his name with two E's in it. And um, Kuffel is a very uh, common surname on Bonholm. And uh, translated directly to English, it means cowfoot. And uh, when the king decided that everybody needed a surname, people got surnames according to what they did and what they owned. And so anyone who lived on a farm received the surname Kuffel. And um, if they were a farm worker, then they would... Um, they received the surname with no E's in it. So their surname was spelt K-O-F-O-D. If the um, person who lived on the farm owned the farm or owned farming property, then they um, were given the surname Kuffel with an E in it. And um, E stands for Ayer, which means owner in Danish. And so that meant that the owner of the farm received a surname with an E in it. Then, as an extra honorary uh, part of a surname, if you can call it that, the, um, the Kuffels who participated in the um, revolt against the Swedes in 1658 were honoured by the king with an extra E in their surname. So there are three different ways of spelling Kuffel on Bonhomme. And if your surname has two E's in it, it means that your ancestors were farm owners, owned farms, and they had participated, or your descendant, from uh, the Kuffels that participated in the revolt against the Swedes, which was actually the last time that Bornholm was ever anything other than Danish. So I think that's a very interesting piece of history and so typical of the fascinating histories that um, I've learnt about since, uh, since I moved, um, moved to this island. So you can see the fishing boats. We're starting to see some more fishing boats. Not very many of them, sadly, because fishing is still not a massive industry on Bornholm anymore as it once was. The quotas um, of herring um, and other fish, cod and salmon, have actually come up in the Baltic Sea. And uh, they, uh, the fishing is, uh, is very good. Um, apart from one thing, and uh, the problem with fishing now is um, the seals. So because the, uh, the fish have uh, come back to uh, the fish stocks are up in the Baltic Sea, the seals are having a wonderful time eating the fish and they are a protected species. So the problem is that the seals actually maul the fish. They don't, they'll eat what they you know, when they're hungry, and then they will maul what is left in the nets. So when the fisherman pulls his net up, he or, he or she pulls their net up, the fish is actually mauled and unable to be sold. And that's a real problem. And uh, the fishermen are not allowed to do anything about the seals because they're a protected species. So uh, there is currently quite a bit of lobbying going on uh, in the European Union and uh, with the Danish government to try and get um, something done um, about the seals.
and this end of the harbour is uh, the um, the slipways where you can put your boat in for a little bit of maintenance and we have this magnificent silo here on our left really a symbol of some of the wonderful days gone by and uh, as we walk around the town you'll notice that there are some really quite beautiful buildings um, and they of course would have been built in Hassler's heyday Everywhere you go on Bonholm, even to the forest car parks, there's always a clean toilet and, um, and uh, disabled uh, facilities. And uh, I just think that's really a wonderful thing when you've travelled as much as, uh, as I have to, uh, to be able to um, expect that when you go to different places. So we're just walking past uh, the Boat Motor Club and uh, we're going to uh, walk out and um, head up along the coast to the, um, to the smokehouse which is just on the other side of these buildings. We're walking towards the open sea, so we'll walk a little bit along the coast before we come to the smokehouse. And my plan is to do a separate uh, video of the smokehouse when it opens again in the summer because they actually have quite an interesting museum um, which talks all about the smoking of the fish and uh, they have a wonderful display of all the different things that can be smoked so when they open up again in the summer my plan is to uh, go and do a film specifically focusing on the smokehouse here summer I've seen quite a few people on a kayak coming into uh, the harbour here at Hassler and uh, that's one of the things I'd like to try and do this summer is to uh, get myself a kayak and and do some 360 films on a kayak I think some of the coastal plains will be be uh, really quite magnificent to film. So here we are 
looking out to the open sea. It's a fairly hazy day today down towards uh, Waina and uh, we can see on our left um, the many uh, smoke chimneys of the various uh, smoke houses that have existed. I'm just going to walk up towards the smoke house and then back into town and and wrap the tour up in town. We're leaving the harbour behind us now of course. Over to our left here is a classic example of some smokestacks and uh, these would be used for private use now. That would be a fisherman who does smokes his own fish. So quite a lot of renovation work going on with the smokehouse this winter. Be interesting to see uh, how it looks when we come back in the summer, when they've got it all ready for the summer season. There's a nice little spot over here to the right where you can go down the stairs and have a good view of the sea. I'll just pop down and have a look. So there we are, the Baltic Sea looking out to Sweden. You can see the tracks where they would have um, transported the herring up. Or maybe they've just been placed there to uh, help with getting this boat up, the, up on the hill. I don't think, I think they would have brought the herring into the harbour and then um, transported it up the hill in wagons to the various smokehouses. This is the last of the smokehouses that are left. You might have guessed we're coming into the main drag of uh, Hassler and uh, here on the right hand side uh, is the town hall which was uh, built in 1855 so it was when things were really looking up for Hassler and it was a it was a very uh, productive and um, exciting town thanks to the initiative of a few uh, a few clever people making the right uh, connections and providing an alternative service to the services that were um, being run in uh, in the main town of Fona which is only about 10 k south of here 10 kilometers south going to walk up the street a little bit because 
there are some quite lovely buildings. And uh, these, of course, were the merchants' houses and the houses that have been built uh, with the wealth of the town. So you can really get a feel for how different it is at this end of town compared to the other end of town, which was where the fishing community lived, um, where the fish and fishermen's cottages were far more humble, much like this red and black half-timbered building here over on our left. Um, that's a fishing cottage because it doesn't have a cellar, whereas the merchant's houses, which this one here on the left as we're walking past, has windows, so it has a cellar. And uh, that was because the merchants needed somewhere to store their merchandise. Whereas, of course, you wouldn't want to store fish for too long in your cellar. And uh, this is just another example of a magnificent shop that would have been built around the same time. So that was a tour of the town and harbour of Hassler. Hope you enjoyed the tour. I'll be doing more tours of Hassler, so please make sure you uh, subscribe so uh, you're uh, notified uh, of when I post um, some more films of Hassler and Bornholm. This is uh, Bronwyn Lund from uh, Bronholm Tours, signing off. Bye for now.